On the 21st of July 2007, world speed reading champion Anne Jones took her place at a desk in a famous London bookshop. The final instalment of Harry Potter, The Deathly Hallows, had just arrived from the publisher and the world was waiting to find out how the story ended. Anne had been asked to read it as quickly as possible by a newspaper so that they could be the first to write a review. Can you guess how long it took her to read all 784 pages? 47 minutes. That's a reading rate of over 4,200 words a minute, or an entire page every three and a half seconds. Can you read a page like this in three and a half seconds? No. Neither can I. Just imagine the possibilities if you could. It would be like magic. But this wasn't magic. Speed reading courses and techniques have existed for decades. But how can it be possible when a typical reading speed of a college-educated adult lies between 200 and 400 words per minute? Can we really believe that some people read 10 times faster? And can anyone learn this? Could you? Let's find out. In this video, we're going to explore the science of reading. We'll look at research from the last 50 years to see if there does exist a magic method that will enable you to read and understand at superhuman speeds. But I have to warn you, controversy lurks within some of the speed reading claims. Let's get going. Have you ever searched for speed reading techniques? If yes, you'll probably know the two most widely recommended strategies to read faster. And if you haven't, I'm about to tell you. Can you guess what they are? Instead of focusing on a few words at once, some people suggest using peripheral vision to take in far more visual information, perhaps as much as a paragraph or even a page. This clever hack gives them the power to peruse thousands of words per minute, and it makes a lot of sense. So why don't we all do it? Because it's biologically impossible. I might as well tell you that to keep my fine physique, I bench press a Tesla Model Y three times a day. So this paper explains it really well. Look at this. So pretty much anything outside of the foveal viewing area is just too blurry to read. And the foveal viewing area is really small. It's about the width of your thumb when you hold it at arm's length out from your eye. So like that. The eye has two types of light sensitive neural receptors, rods and cones. I guess you've probably heard of them. But do you know what they do? Cones are the high definition true color sensors that work better in bright light and can see detail and color. The rods are like an old TV from the 1950s and can only see in black and white. Cones are located mainly in the foveal area with rods generally outside. Nature has optimized how the system works. Cones transmit every detail they detect to the brain. Information from the rods though is pulled and then transmitted. You can think of it as a type of lossy file compression, like a grayscale JPEG. Detail is not preserved. Anything falling onto this part of the eye will be blurred, and if it's a word, you won't be able to read it. Research has shown that words become impossible to make out at just three degrees visual angle away from the point of fixation. The suggestion that you can process large amounts of text in a single glance, according to research, is probably not the case. Instead, we need to look at saccades. They hold the answer. Do you know what they are? If not, don't worry, you soon will. But before that, do you remember I said there were two methods that are widely recommended? Peripheral vision is the first, which isn't particularly useful. What about the second? You know, it's that voice you hear in your head when reading. Ooh, Giles, you are gorgeous. Uh, no, not that voice. The voice of the text. Here's mine. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank. Some speed reading advice tells us that to read quickly, we must silence this voice because it limits our maximum reading speed. Silencing it will set us free. And this seems plausible, although in practice it can be quite difficult. However, if you look at the science and the research, these claims are questionable. Why do you read? It's to understand, to learn, to comprehend. I think we can agree on that, and the inner voice plays an essential role in that process. How do we know? Several studies have shown it. This excellent paper summarizes dozens of them. It highlights decades of research showing that eliminating or minimizing the inner voice results in decreased comprehension. There's also evidence that subvocalization could play a role in helping word recognition, leading to increased reading speed. 
This paper by the same author hints at that very possibility. More research is needed to fully understand the role of the inner voice, but from what we already know, it's important, it helps you understand, it's your friend. You don't know how happy that makes me, Giles. As you can see, some of the advice given about speed reading has very little evidence to support it. Worse, much of the evidence contradicts some of the most popular advice. Do you ever find that when you're reading, you occasionally have to move your eye back over something to understand it properly? It's very common, most people do it, even skilled readers, and they're called regressions. A lot of speed reading advice suggests you should train yourself out of doing this, as it slows you down. In fact, there are speed reading apps that attempt to completely eradicate regression by using rapid serial visual presentation. This is RSVP applied to Hamlet's to be or not to be soliloquy. Well done, you've just read the whole thing in five seconds. Moving, wasn't it? Research has been done into this as well. So what do you think? Could this be a useful way of reading at extremely high speeds? Well, in 2014, a team from the University of California, San Diego, put it to the test. They used a trailing mask like this that reacted to the eye position of the subject. Once the subject made a forward saccade away from a word, it was masked, remaining so even if they looked back at it. Here the asterisks show the position of eye fixations. What did they find? Regressions are crucial to understanding what we read. Here's what the paper said. Our data showing the relationship between regressions and reading comprehension are the most compelling evidence suggesting that reading, without the ability to reread parts of the text, when necessary, decreases comprehension accuracy. What we see here, and it's hardly surprising, is that there always exists a trade-off between speed and comprehension. There are methods that work, and we are coming to those. Remember I mentioned saccades earlier? Let's focus on those. Saccades are the quick eye movements you make as your focus jumps between words while reading a line of text. Understanding these will help you read more effectively. Scientists have spent over a hundred years studying them, and recently, by using high-speed video cameras connected to computers, they've discovered the eye makes several fixations as it jumps along a line of text. It's not a smooth process, and it's attempting to place words in the foveal region. Each fixation lasts around 250 milliseconds, Typically, each saccade takes 20 milliseconds, and during the entire process of eye movement, although your brain isn't reading, it's constantly processing the already seen words. Can you guess what the key finding from all this research is? Reading speed is not limited by the ability of your eye to move along the line of text or to take in information. It's cognitive processing that slows you down. Subvocalization and regression are both necessary to maintain a high level of comprehension and are frequently used by skilled readers. Now I've done my research, I've seen what not to do. Can I speed read? Let's put it to the test. I'm going to try to speed read the biography of Elon Musk by Walter Isaacson. Here goes, wish me luck. Oh, that was good. It's about Elon Musk. So how can you increase your reading speed without sacrificing comprehension? By far the most important factor for reading more quickly are your language processing skills. You need to practice with language. Remember when we were talking about saccades and fixations earlier? Research shows that fixations are shorter for more familiar words, and some familiar words are skipped over completely. As your language processing skills and vocabulary increase, the number of words familiar to you will go up and so will your reading speed. There is a way of significantly increasing reading speed by two or perhaps even three times, but it does come with a cost to comprehension, although it can be useful sometimes. You probably already do it, but research might be able to help you do it more effectively. It's skimming. When skimming, you're usually looking to extract important information from a text. It's often suggested that you should zigzag your eyes across the page or columns, but research shows that this is a poor strategy. It's better to approach it systematically. If it's a book, first look at the table of contents to understand the structure. Read headings, the first and last paragraph of each chapter, and if you're focusing on a particular section, the first and last sentence of each paragraph. Because the research doesn't provide explanations into how superfast readers like Anne Jones, who I mentioned at the start of the video, are able to read at such high speeds. And this paper, 
which I've used for a lot of the research in the video, it's an excellent paper and there's a link in the description, acknowledges that, and only speculates as to how it might be possible. It says effective speed readers appear to be intelligent people who already know a great deal concerning the topic that they're reading about and are able to successfully skim the material at rapid rates and accept the lowered comprehension that accompanies skimming. But from what I've read about super fast readers, there seems to be more going on than that because I think for an ordinary reader like me, if I tried to read at those speeds, my comprehension would go to zero. So there's something that these super fast readers are doing that we don't completely understand. And I think it's likely to do with language processing. So work on your language processing and read as much as you can. Have you ever dreamed of a career in data analytics? Of course you have, that's why you're here. Then I want to introduce you to the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate. Not your typical data science course, but a full program designed by Google. Here's the deal. It's suitable for beginners, self-paced and remote friendly, making it easy to fit into your schedule. You can be job ready in six months with just 10 hours a week, no prior experience needed. You'll learn data cleaning, analysis and visualization using spreadsheets, SQL, R programming and Tableau. After completing the program, you'll be ready to start your new career. Plus, the certification will spruce up your CV and LinkedIn profile. I've seen the possibilities of data analysis firsthand and the career avenues that a program like this can open are diverse and I think exciting. Not sure it's for you? Try it. Sign up for a seven day free trial. Give the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate a go. Link is in the description to get started.